San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning as the coronavirus variants continue to spread, including right here in San Antonio, the effort to vaccinate Americans is ramping up. And outside with live cam, do we need a jacket? Do we need an umbrella? Do we need to stay home or do we need to stay at work? We'll get some answers coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is February 10th. Good morning, Sarah, down in Studio B. Good morning, Mark. And I kind of like the stay at home answer, you know? I know, right? It's kind of it's muggy uh, and yucky out unless there. Unless you've been stuck home for a year and you kind of want to get out. Anything. You know, the trip <laughs> to the grocery store, it's a big deal nowadays. That, that's true. <laughs> Mike, it appears we've had some blowing drizzle in the overnight hours. What is the situation for midweek? You know, it, it was one of those where I walked outside this morning and was like, is it? Is it wanting to, you know, is there wanting to be some mist out there? The roads were ever so slightly damp. And as you can see, it is kind of murky looking. Once again, we do have some fog. Uh Bernie stage already is down to just a half mile visibility. Not much at the airport, but, you know, as you case in point yesterday, it got a lot thicker as time rolled on and most everybody is seeing fog in one way, shape or another uh, down to three quarters of a mile in Victoria Rock Springs down to two miles visibility fog out in the hill country as well. And there's also a little bit of rain showing up. There wasn't anything just to say half an hour ago, but we've got this line of a few showers coming in from the coastal plain sliding up to the north to northwest and we'll continue to see some light showers around throughout the day. Also, temperatures which are mid upper 40s, uh, some low 50s around here. That front finally, finally moved on through. We had, um, gosh, about a uh, 15, 20 degree difference in temperatures from Austin down here yesterday and then even hotter down to the uh, southwest. But the front has moved through a good part of the area, except well down to the uh, southwest. And temperatures really aren't going anywhere throughout the day. Mold, mountain cedar, ash are all on the uh, low side this morning. And uh, we'll stay right around low 50s or upper 40s, whatever you are. Fog, mist, a couple of sprinkles around here, some light showers, a few showers throughout the day. And again, temperatures aren't going any way, anywhere. Wind is going to be picking up. We'll start to get a little bit cooler each and every day and then really cold by the weekend and then really cold starting off next week and things may get a little interesting. We'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, what's going on, sir? And too many problems uh, on the roads in the area uh, this morning, Mike, but you mentioned the fog that is starting to creep in, especially areas to the north of San Antonio and to the north of New Braunfels. So watch out for that if you are traveling out early this morning. Also have some construction uh, out and about. Uh, this is uh, I-10 East at Graytown Road. Traffic flowing well, but the right lane is closed uh, in that stretch, so that's something to watch out for. Also have the construction we've been talking about on uh, Loop 410 uh, West, particularly this morning at Marbach, and here's a look at that on Transguide. You can see uh, the the emergency vehicles out in the distance. So watch out for that if you're on the west side this morning and then you can see the uh, low clouds and everything. So plan for some extra time. Mark, Steph, uh, Sarah, over to you. For the first time in Bear County, Metro Health is reporting two cases of the COVID-19 UK variant. Local leaders and public health officials made the announcement during last night's briefing. Briefing rather. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown. Do we know how long that variant has been in our community, Stephen? Good morning, Mark. Now that's still not clear. Now we do know that the UK variant has been in our area for some time and local leaders and public health officials do say it was only a matter of time before we started seeing these cases being reported. Now, right now, those cases that were reported during last night's briefing are still being investigated by Metro Health, but Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the variant has been in Texas since the start of this year. And right now there are at least 40 confirmed cases throughout the state. Meanwhile, Metro Health is reporting 1,348 new cases of COVID-19. That brings the confirmed total of cases to 184,784. Now, the seven-day moving average now sits at 935 per 24 hours. The death toll remains at 2,362. Now, 884 people are being treated in local hospitals. That's down 33 from the previous report. 341 are in the ICU and 198 or on ventilators today. Now, thankfully, there were no new deaths reported during last night's briefing, but coming up later on GMSA, more on the ongoing efforts to get those in our community vaccinated. Mark, Sarah.
Stephen Cavazos live downtown. Thank you very much. As COVID variants spread across the country, more than 32 million Americans have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And we now know that one million doses of the vaccine will be sent to 6,500 select pharmacies in the country this week. Here's ABC's Marcus Moore. The pace of the vaccine rollout slowly picking up. The federal government sending out an additional 1 million doses this week to 6,500 select pharmacies across the U.S. The expansion part of a larger strategy by the White House to ensure no one is left behind. Equity means that we are reaching everyone, particularly those in underserved and rural communities and those who have been hit hardest by this pandemic. Walgreens taking appointments in 13 states and Puerto Rico for vaccinations beginning Friday. As vaccine inventory continues to grow, we'll be able to then ensure that we increase access um, to all of our patients. CVS also expected to begin scheduling appointments Thursday in 11 states, with vaccinations also starting Friday. Some states have already been supplying their pharmacies for weeks. In Houston, Buzz Belmont booked his shots with Sam's Club. I've been online like every day, and today was the first time I've gotten through to get appointments, so I got my husband and I appointments for Friday. So far, 9.8 million fully vaccinated. But across the U.S., there's frustrations over supply shortages, unclaimed second doses, and inconsistent vaccine shipments. It's an issue now of scarcity. It's an issue of supply. The vaccination effort amidst an urgent race to stop the spread of the new, more contagious variants. The White House saying it has stepped up monitoring. The UK variant now reported in at least 39 states. In other developments, the Biden administration says it plans to begin sending vaccine supply directly to community health centers across the country starting next week. Phase one will focus on 250 of those centers with 1 million vaccine shots to be administered. And separately, FEMA says it plans to send mobile units directly to communities hardest hit. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Dallas. Back here at home, 436, 51 degrees. Still ahead, a first look at the federal investigation that found, that looked into that helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant. And the Spurs trying to get four wins in a row last night against Golden State. Didn't turn out so well, though. We have some highlights coming up. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 51 degrees this morning. Mike says some areas are experiencing just a little bit of fog. We'll have more on that and that anticipated cool front coming in later this week. In your morning headlines, House prosecutors have kicked off Donald Trump's historic second impeachment trial with graphic video of the Capitol insurrection. They also talked about Trump's own calls for a rally crowd to march and to fight against his reelection defeat. Trump's defense team insists the former president's remarks are protected by the First Amendment. Sources told ABC News that Trump is tracking the impeachment trial from Mar-a-Lago and is not pleased with the performance of his defense team. Leaders of the U.S. Navy condemning extremism in the ranks. The message comes after symbols of hate and violence were recently found aboard ships. Last month, a black sailor on the USS Lake Champlain found a noose above his bunk. The second incident happened in the past week and involved hate speech graffiti discovered in a bathroom aboard the USS Carl Vinson. Meanwhile, the new U.S. Secretary of Defense has ordered a military-wide stand-down for April 6th. On that day, commanders will take a break from regular duties to address the issue of extremism with their troops. The latest coronavirus relief package under consideration in the House would make health care more affordable for some Americans. The bill increased Affordable Care Act subsidies for two years. During that same period, it would be a cost for middle class Americans who earn too much to receive financial assistance now. Under the plan, enrollees wouldn't pay more than 8.5 percent of their income for health insurance. Those changes would be part of President Biden's relief package, temporarily fulfilling a campaign promise. DeJounte Murray and the San Antonio Spurs looking for a repeat performance last night with a uh, second straight faceoff against Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. Unfortunately, this one was all Golden State. Steph scored 32 points. The Warriors dominated San Antonio last night. The final 114-91, snapping the Spurs' three-game win streak after blowing a 14-point lead in a 105-100 loss to San Antonio on Monday. Golden State did not let up in the second night of back-to-backs. Curry was four for 10 on threes and 
11 for 20 overall. Meanwhile, Rudy Gay scored 17 points. Trey Lyles had 15 and Keldon Johnson and Patty Mills 13 apiece for San Antonio. The Spurs were without injured starters Derek White and LaMarcus Aldridge, who has a sore right hip. Ricky guard Devin Vassell made his first career start. Vassell is the first lottery pick selected by the Spurs to start as a rookie since Tim Duncan in 1997. This was the Spurs' final home game before embarking on their annual nearly month-long rodeo road trip during the Stock Show and Rodeo. They open a seven-game road trip Friday against the Atlanta Hawks. The full schedule on our sports page right now at ksat.com. 442, 51 degrees. Still ahead, are you using all those cool features that come with your smart speaker coming up? How to make life easier for you and your family with new ways to use your device. And the latest on the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant and what federal investigators are saying about what went wrong. In this morning's GMA First Look, new insight into what caused the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others. The National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of this accident was the pilot's decision to continue flight under visual flight rules and to instrument meteorological conditions which resulted in the pilot's spatial disorientation and loss of control. The NTSB places blame squarely on the pilot, Ara Zobayan, for the helicopter crash, saying in its report that the pilot made a series of decisions that went against his training and federal aviation rules when he flew into bad weather. We use the term crash rather than accident, and I think it's important to understand the distinction. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more details from the NTSB report and the new reaction this morning. With your GMA First Look, Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, on another note this morning, smart speakers such as Amazon's Echo or Google Home can be a fun addition to your house. A lot of people have them but aren't necessarily maximizing their potential. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with just some of that smart speaker's hidden skills. Whether you've got a Google Home, Amazon Echo, or Apple HomePod, you can use it to do a lot more than just play music. The options are really limitless, and if you have multiple speakers, you can do even more. Here's the latest news from NPR. If you're new to the smart speaker game, start simple. Get the latest news, weather updates, and read your calendar out loud. At 1.30 p.m., dog grooming. Your speaker can even walk you through your workout. Are you ready to start your daily workout? In the kitchen, your speaker can be your sous chef, answering food prep questions, adding ingredients to your grocery list. And you can use it to set several cooking timers. Alexa, set a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. Your smart speaker can also stand in for a basic safety and security system. Locking. Hang on. The Alexa Care Hub is a great feature for loved ones that live alone. It allows you to monitor them and check in on them with a quick phone call or video chat. Control and connect your other smart devices to your speaker so you have one centralized hub for, say, your doorbell. Someone is at the front doorbell. Or even connect it to the robotic vacuum. Robo vac box starting cleaning session. Not as many products work with Apple's HomeKit or Siri compared with Alexa and Google, but it's more than enough to get Get you connected to high tech Caroline, times. Time. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. You know, I, I have an Alexa, and I'm always really scared that she's just listening to everything. <laughs> you know why? You know why you're scared? Why? Because she is. <laughs> she is. And I'm glad to see that piece. I'm not the only one that named my Roomba. In the Roomba, in that piece, they had named theirs Bob. Mine's named Kenny. Uh, oh. After Kenny from South Park. Nice. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I don't know why. My mom named her Susie. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Samuel King is standing by with a look at uh, traffic. Good morning, Samuel. Good morning. Good. Uh, I'll, I have to find a name if I ever get a robotic. Uh, Mark. Mark. Yeah, name it Mark. <laughs> Mark. Mm -hmm. Or Mike. Oh. Mark. I said it first, okay? You can't. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, things looking uh, fine again, but we still have this construction uh, on the west side uh, 151 at 410. I have some construction of Marbach, too. You can see a little bit of a delay now on 151 heading uh, to 410. That, that intersection has been closed uh, overnight because of this construction, but we expect it to open up here shortly. Also, have a bit of a slowdown here in the southeast side. This is on uh, 37. Here's uh, Pecan Valley. Here's uh, military. Uh, so you can see that uh, yellow uh, this time of morning is a bit unusual, but the traffic time still looking good if you're coming in from 1604 
uh, 13 minutes either way. It's usually about 11 or 12 minutes. And we also here uh, have a situation on the uh, frontage road here at 410 at Jackson Keller. There's some uh, act law enforcement activity there on the uh, shoulder there. So if you're in that area this morning, that's just something to uh, watch out for as well. Again, that's on the frontage road. As you can see there, 410 is looking fine, guys. All right. I, I should explain real quick. So when Kenny gets stuck, he slow he stops and he dies. So it they've killed right. Kenny. Yeah. Yes, if you watch right. South Park, you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's if, why. But if your Alexa starts telling you things are broken and they're not, mm -hmm. and then starts calling you Dave, run. <laughs> okay. And that's Mike's reference to 2001: A Space Odyssey. Yeah. And says, what My doing? favorite part of the morning so far. Every time we say Alexa. Alexa. People are like, stop talking <laughs> to Alexa. <laughs> Whoops, I did it again. <laughs> hey, uh, it's chilly out there. It is damp out there. And get used to this because it's going to be sticking around. And it's also going to be getting colder. Very, very cold in the next few days. So just a murky picture out there right now. And we do have a few uh, other than the mist. And again, it wasn't even as, as heavy a mist bit of it out there uh, yesterday or yesterday and then also this morning. Now we've got some showers that are showing up here along the plain. Those will continue kind of off and on here and there uh, throughout this morning as well as the afternoon. Visibility, everybody has some fog, some a lot thicker going up I-10 and then uh, two and a half miles visibility in Pleasanton, a little bit out there toward Del Rio. And then even off to the east, and this is going to be sticking around through the morning as well. Temperatures, look at the difference. 44 Austin, 51 here in town, and then it's 70 right now in Laredo, 61 in Rock Springs. So the front is obviously lying right about, uh, say, Rock Springs. It came down and kind of came in from the northeast and then stopped. Or is the microphone that's making noise? Is it? You want to change it out right now? or? Okay. Well, here, okay, let, let's do this real, real quickly, and let me just pop this one on, and what we're going to be doing is talking about uh, temperatures yesterday were, like I said, very warm here in town, but we did have the... Uh, that front that slid on through and stayed down to the uh, south, uh, stayed up to the northeast, pardon me. So we got 79 yesterday. Now, at 20 in Amarillo as of right now. So obviously there's much, much colder air that's going to be sliding on in here. And that's going to be over the course of the next couple of days. So here's what the computer model looks like. We keep some scattered showers around throughout the day today. And then tomorrow morning, yeah, there will be a little bit of some mixed precipitation potentially in northern portions of the hill country. Very light though because we're not looking at a lot of rain tomorrow but we'll see a, in the morning but we'll see more rain throughout the afternoon then going on into hang on one second producer going on into late in the weekend sunday is going to be cold and blustery rain will start to move in here and then overnight into monday we are going to be seeing some uh, mixed precipitation some uh, looks like a little bit of light snow as well as some sleet perhaps even a bit of uh, freezing rain that's going to be early on monday 52 today at noon just get used to seeing the number 52 right now because that's what it's going to be all day long. A few showers and then it's going to get breezier tonight. Tomorrow we will have rain, maybe a little bit of mix in the uh, hill country starting off. And then Friday, some sunshine, a little bit, but only 45. Notice how temperatures continue to go down. Blustery cold Sunday and then mixed precipitation Monday. Other than a little bit of mix uh, up in the hill country early tomorrow morning. All right, thank you very much, Mike. 453, 51 degrees. Up next, Diana Ross pays tribute to the former Supreme singing partner, Mary Wilson. This morning, Supreme singer Mary Wilson is being remembered. Plus, it's the 50th anniversary of a landmark album. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Diana Ross paying tribute to her former Supreme singing partner, Mary Wilson. Though the two weren't exactly friends towards the end, Ross posting a throwback picture on Twitter and writing that she has so many wonderful memories of their time together adding that the Supremes will live on in our hearts. Mary Wilson died unexpectedly Monday night. She was 76. It's going to get very hard. You're going to see things from Nicole never seen before. Grab a box of tissues if you're going to watch the movie Our Friend, which stars Jason Segel, Casey Affleck, and Dakota Johnson, about three friends dealing with a terminal cancer diagnosis. And Segel tells me he feels the movie hits harder now, given everything everyone is dealing with. Even when we say, I'm doing good, isolation's hard. You know, this I think this has been harder on us than we will realize for a long time. And uh, I'm glad there are I'm glad that there are some release valves and steam vents in art 
so that we can have a cry. Our friend is out now in theaters and on demand. Fifty years ago today, a landmark album made its way into the world, Carol King's Tapestry, released February 10th, 1971. It would go on to win a bunch of Grammys, including record, song, and album of the year. And it spent 15 straight weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart, a record for a solo woman that still stands today. And happy birthday to Uzo Aduba, the Emmy-winning Orange is the New Black actress, is 40 today, while Oscar-winning Marriage Story star Laura Dern is 54. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. It's about uh, two minutes away from 551 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on Donald Trump's impeachment trial as Trump's lawyers insist that he cannot be convicted as a former president. Plus, would you pay for Twitter? Why the social media service is considering paid subscription features coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, the Senate impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump continues. I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill, tracking the latest. Weather is going to be weird for the next four or five days. I mean, lots and lots of changes. Kind of a wild and wacky forecast. Mike is standing by with more. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. We've made it to February 10th. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Mike, this morning when I was walking into the station, very slow fat raindrops started falling down, but then they stopped. But I'm, are we going to see rain later today? Much needed rain. Actually, some folks are seeing uh, some rain as of right now. See, I didn't see any of uh, the drops, just a little bit of light mist out there and the roads were kind of uh, slippery. We do have some rain showing up on radar and <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, tomorrow. We are going to be seeing uh, hopefully some some beneficial rain around here. So as far as right now, we've got a little bit of rain showing up on radar. This is what it looks like, and you can see moving in here from the the coastal plain. We've got those uh, light showers, not anything too awfully heavy as of right now. And also there is a lot of fog. As you can see visibilities. Um, everybody's got some sort of fog. We've actually dropped down a little bit here at the airport, half mile Bernie stage, and then three miles at Pleasanton, even far and wide, all the points of the compass. Everybody is seeing some sort of fog, and this will be sticking around for the next couple of hours, plus some of that mist or even a couple of light sprinkles around here. And uh, temperatures, boy, really depends on where you live. Mid 40s up in the hill country, Austin, low 50s here. 70 still in Laredo. So obviously that front, which it was a weird movement yesterday. It was kind of circling around coming in from the northeast. That obviously has not moved down to the uh, southwest as of yet. It will eventually, though, and we've got these uh, high temperatures, of course, that were far and wide yesterday and, and the day before that. And we're at 51 right now. It's not going anywhere with these temperatures throughout the rest of today. And then we'll start to get colder tomorrow and the next day, next day, and then really bottom out by later Later on in the weekend, we do have a couple of opportunities for a little bit of mixed precipitation as well in the Hill Country tomorrow morning and then Monday morning around a good chunk of the area. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority right now, Samuel King, anything going on, sir? Well, just wanted to bring up, Mike, you're talking about the fog. It's really showing up on our road weather tool here north of New Braunfels, Canyon Lake area over toward Bernie. So if you're coming in on I-10, uh, that's something to look out for this morning. Had some construction on the west side overnight. Let's take a look at how that's impacting uh, things at the moment as they're expected to be picking that up 10 minutes on 151 between 604 and 98 minutes uh, going the other direction. So that looks fairly good at the moment. Looking at some travel times, we mentioned Bernie, some fog in that area, 24 minutes still on I-10 coming into downtown San Antonio. So that's pretty good. 26 minutes coming in uh, from New Braunfels on 35 into San Antonio and then 29 minutes on 37 coming in from Pleasanton and here is a uh, trans guide still have the situation on the frontage roads there at uh, 410 at Jackson Keller. So that's something to look out for 410 as you can see looks fine. Marks Sarah over to you. Thank you Samuel history made in Washington DC this week marks the first time a president has faced an impeachment trial after leaving office. Donald Trump facing one count of incitement of insurrection after the January 6th siege on the Capitol. The trial kicking off with arguments from both sides over whether it's even constitutional to try a former president. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is on Capitol Hill with the latest. 
The Senate chamber under siege a month ago, now a courtroom. Senators reliving the Capitol attack on the first day of former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. House impeachment managers using searing images from the January 6th attack to lay claim that Trump incited the deadly insurrection, using his own words to plead their case. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Lead Democratic prosecutor Jamie Raskin recounting how his family was with him that day at the Capitol, his emotions weighing heavy as he recalled what his daughter said to him. He said, Dad, I don't want to come back to the Capitol. <laughs> Day one for this unprecedented trial was meant to focus on the constitutionality of the trial itself, with Democrats arguing Trump can still be impeached even though he's no longer in the Oval Office. But Trump's lead defense attorney, Bruce Castor, spent most of his time on the floor sauntering through arguments that weren't clearly related to those constitutional questions. States Senators are patriots first. They love their country. They love their families. Even Republican Senator Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski say they were confused. I was perplexed by the first attorney who did not seem to make any arguments at all. And sources tell ABC News Trump was not pleased with the performance of his defense team. Trump's other attorney, David Schoen, getting things back on track, trying to assert since Trump was removed from office by the will of the American voters, Democrats have no case. For a great many Americans see this process for exactly what it is, a chance by a group of partisan politicians seeking to eliminate Donald Trump from the American political scene. But after the four hours of arguments, senators voting to move ahead with the trial, with six Republicans siding with Democrats that the trial is constitutional, even though Trump is no longer president. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. To other news now, some major supermarket chains joining the ongoing efforts to get people vaccinated. More than 1,000 Walmart and Sam's Club pharmacies will get allotments of the COVID-19 vaccine. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown. Stephen, good morning. Do we know how many of these pharmacies will be uh, participating in our area? Well, good morning, Mark. As of right now, there is only one Walmart pharmacy that will be soon distributing the COVID-19 vaccine. But this is all part of the U.S. federal retail pharmacy program. Now, that Walmart is located off Days of Valla Road, and they will begin administering the vaccine as early as this Friday. Now, they will be administering this to eligible residents who fall into tiers 1A and 1B. Now, as vaccine efforts are ramping up, the WellMed hotline will also open again later this morning. Now, you can call that number that's listed on your screen. That's 1-833-968-1745. That hotline will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. WellMed officials say the line is already overwhelmed with calls, but they encourage people to keep trying. Now, 6,000 slots will be filled between two clinic locations, both on the city's east side and west side. And we also want to remind you that Bernie is also hosting a vaccination hub this Friday. Registration opens later this morning. 500 doses of the Moderna vaccine will be distributed on Friday at St. Peter the Apostle Catholic Church. Now, the link to make that reservation will open later this morning, beginning at 9. There is also an option for a Spanish translation. Now, we have all this information posted on our website. That's at ksat.com. Reporting live this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Also on our website, details on the CVS stores distributing the vaccine in San Antonio. Starting tomorrow, appointments can be made online and by phone. Well, District 2 is desperate to take back the east side. This after a six-year-old child was shot while at a church event this past Sunday. The east side community is frustrated after several children have been the innocent bystanders during the gun violence that is plaguing their streets. Residents say they want to see more activities in the community for young people. They say having more policing and surveillance will also help make their community safer. Even though we're asking for uh, more transparency and more accountability of our, of our police officers, now is that time that we have the conversation of what can we do to truly work together. District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan, who is running for re-election, says she is working on a strategic plan with San Antonio police to crack down on the crime in her district. Now, Farrell Clark, who is also running for the District 2 Council seat, released a statement saying in part, quote, we must make investments in our youth programs, better paying jobs and education, drug rehabilitation and addressing mental illness. Studies show when you invest in the community, the crime rate goes down, end quote. His full statement on our website, ksat.com.
Time check just about 510 51 degrees. Still ahead, a look at why Twitter is now considering subscription fees and other paid features. Plus, the battle between short form social platforms continues. How TikTok is making things a little more difficult for Instagram. A look outside with live cam. There's a little bit of that fog that Mike has been talking about. Also, will we expect rain later today? Mike will let us know when we come back. 513 by now you probably heard of TikTok. If you haven't, it, it's essentially a social media platform with very short videos ranging of everything from dances to politics. And as Max Massey explains, they are a real competition for Instagram. Instagram launched Reels, a short form video product in the United States on August 5th, just days after former President Donald Trump announced plans to try and ban the Chinese owned TikTok in the country, sending panicked users scrambling to find alternatives. And six months later, Reels on Instagram, not really taken off in the way the company had hoped. TikTok has actually outlasted the Trump administration and continues to be popular. Roughly 100 million users across the United States, a significant impact on American pop culture and a loyal mix of influencers who don't seem to be going anywhere. Unlike with stories at this point in its history, Instagram has not released any metrics about reels so far. Facebook has come under some scrutiny from regulators and critics for its aggressive approach to acquiring or cloning rivals to maintain its dominance in the social media market. But Instagram's early struggles to take on TikTok is a reminder that a number of Facebook's copycat products have flopped or simply come up short. Building a clone is easy. Creating a vibrant community is not even for a social media giant like Facebook. With Reels, Instagram hopes to try to replicate much of what makes TikTok popular. That includes the editing effects and an ability to add music or a background sound. But what's harder to replicate is TikTok's powerful For You page and the For You page algorithm, which serves up videos tailored to each user's interests. Here's the ironic part. Instagram Reels largely remains a home to TikTok's greatest hits, with a lot of people reposting their popular TikTok videos with the platform trademark watermark to reels. It's common to scroll through reels videos and see one TikTok video after another. Guys, back to you. Like somebody's building a kitchen in the background uh, there. You know, on the weekends, we, we're, we're doing a lot of things. <laughs> hey, you know, you're allowed to tell people to shush, right? I know. I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. I can come in and do it for you if you want. 515 right now, 51 degrees. Well, still ahead, why PGA of America is looking to allow distance measuring devices at its three major golf events for the first time. Needles, essential for pine trees, but maybe not for people with certain inflammatory conditions because there are options like an injection, Zelljans, the first and only pill of its kind that treats moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or moderate to severe ulcerative colitis when other medicines have not helped enough. Zelljans can lower your ability to fight infections. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections like TB and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms or are prone to infections, serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zelljans for RA may increase risk of death, tears in the stomach or intestines, and serious allergic reactions have happened. Needles, fine for some things. But for you, there's a pill that may provide symptom relief. Ask your doctor about the pill first prescribed for RA more than seven years ago. Zelljans, an injection. In today's Ted Bites, Twitter considering fees to use its platform. The company confirms it is exploring subscriptions and other revenue generating features. Its primary moneymaker is still ads. And according to Bloomberg, one idea Twitter is considering is allowing people to tip the users they follow. Spotify says it is testing the streaming of live lyrics in the U.S. The music streaming service started offering the new lyrics feature to some American users yesterday. No word yet on when the test will expand. The company once offered the feature in the U.S. but stopped in 2016. And distance measuring devices are being allowed for the first time at three major golf tournaments. The devices allow a player to focus on an object and determine its exact yardage from the ball. They'll be used at one event each on the PGA Women's and Senior Tours. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Just about 520.
We're going to check in with Samuel King with our traffic authority. Uh, good morning, uh, guys. Uh, before we get into uh, the traffic for today, Mike's, of course, been talking about the cold weather we're expecting this weekend. So uh, AAA Texas has some reminders. First, get your car batteries checked and your car battery systems checked because uh, the weather expecting can be pretty hard on your batteries. And to preserve the battery life, uh, turn off your lights, heater, and wipers when you turn off your engine. I know a lot of people like to keep it on. It makes it easier when you come on, uh, but that also can affect the battery life as well as uh, your chargers, your phone chargers. Unplug those as well. And another cold weather tip, just keep a blanket in the truck this weekend in case uh, something happens to you and it's cold. Uh, you want to keep yourself and your family warm. So those are some reminders. Weather story this morning is some fog in the area, particularly here around Bernie on I-10 uh, coming into town. So let's take a look at how that's impacting travel times at this hour. Uh, looking pretty good there, 24 minutes or 25 minutes in each direction. And once you're inside uh, 1604, it looks like 13 or uh, 11 minutes uh, heading uh, the reverse direction. So that's looking good so far. And here's once you get downtown, here's what you'll see at the uh, Y. You can barely see the skyline there this morning because of the low clouds, guys. Mike, how much stuff do we need today? Jacket, umbrella, both? Yeah, yeah uh, jacket, yeah. And umbrella, because temperatures now down to the southwest, uh, you're still going to be probably not needing a jacket because it's very warm and going to be staying very warm. But yeah, we're at uh, in the low 50s, going to be staying there all day long. And it's that damp chill with all this humidity out there. And we do have a couple of showers that are showing up on radar right now. There's just kind of a little bit of mist hanging out there. The roads were dampish this morning, but here's some of this uh, light rain. And as you can see, it's very scattered, but that will continue to work its way up to the northwest. So we will continue to have a couple of showers, but more rain is going to be coming and a little more widespread, a little bit heavier tomorrow. Visibility, everybody is seeing fog in one form or another. Six miles visibility out there at the airport. Rock Springs is down to just a quarter mile, three quarters in Victoria. And again, everybody within earshot has some fog. Okay, yesterday's high temperatures, it depended on where you live. We were watching this front come on through here. It started really moving quickly through the hill country. It was kind of wrapping around, coming in from the northeast, and then it stopped. Obviously, we cleared out somewhat, got up to 79 degrees. Look at that, 86 in Laredo, 87 in Catula, but then stayed at 64. That was the warmest, and that was earlier on in the day in Austin. And then today, again, depends on where you live. Looking at 46 in Austin, 81 in Laredo, and we are going to be staying right in the, uh, the low 50s today, and that's pretty much going to be about it. So we continue to have a couple of light showers around the area, and these temperatures are all going to be above freezing. Tomorrow, rain becomes a little bit more widespread and in the morning there may actually be a little bit of some mixed precipitation in northern portions of the hill country perhaps uh Gillespie, a little bits of maybe northern Kendall County uh, Blanco County just uh, not much rain in the morning but some of it could be freezing a little bit of a sleet or some of it uh, freezing on contact. And then throughout the day, it's mostly just going to be rain and like I said, we could see some heavy rain, perhaps even a thunderstorm thrown in tomorrow. Then we jump ahead into Sunday. Now, Saturday morning, a very small chance of a sprinkle or two and something, but uh, not very likely. Now, Sunday, it's going to be cloudy. It's going to be blustery and very cold temperatures only in the 30s. And then we'll start to see some rain move in here. And yes, that will be changing over into a little bit of uh, sleet and or snow. And that's going to be late Sunday night and uh, throughout the first portion of the day on Monday. And thank goodness it's a holiday on Monday. A lot of folks do have the, the day off. 52 degrees today at noon, and that's what it's going to be later on. Temperatures really are not going to move at all throughout the day. A couple of showers around here, and then the wind is going to be picking up later on tonight, so it's going to be kind of blustery. It's going to be windy tomorrow, and we will have rain. Temperatures, again, basically stay steady throughout the day, but only in the mid-40s. And then Friday, perhaps a bit of sunshine. A morning shower is going to be possible on Saturday. Not very likely, though. If anything does fall, it would be mixed up to the north. And then Sunday, blustery and cold. Monday, we will have some light snow and or a little bit of uh, sleet mixed in or something uh, freezing on contact around the area. And temperature is going to be hard pressed to get out of or get above freezing. We're looking at an extended period, more than 24 hours potentially, to stay below freezing Sunday night in through Monday. Ooh, weird, weird stuff. Yes, and on <laughs> Sunday, we are one month away from the next time change. Can you believe it? Wow, it's just really? by. Really? Really? 
Oh. Oh. We don't like this time change. No, he's disappointed. 524, 51 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at the actress who is playing Aretha Franklin, plus more details on an app that lets musicians jam live while miles apart. 527, movies, music, television, we got it all in today's entertainment report. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Well, you only got three chords? I will make them sound like a million bucks. Here's your first look at Cynthia Erivo as Aretha Franklin in Genius Aretha. The award-winning singer and actress stars in the authorized eight-episode series, which debuts on Nat Geo March 21st and on Hulu March 22nd. Hello, everyone. Make yourself to home, Mr. Mankiewicz, or shall I call you Herman? Please, call me Mank. Amanda Seyfried has earned Golden Globe and Critics' Choice nominations for her role as Marion Davies in Mank. Now she's set to receive the Montecito Award at the 36th Annual Santa Barbara International Film Festival for her performance in the film and her overall career. Seyfried will be honored April 9th. These musicians aren't in the same room or the same country. They're nearly 2,000 miles apart and still playing together live using a new service called Aloha by Elk. The device allows musicians and singers to rehearse, perform, and record from different locations with no noticeable audio delay. Info at alohabyelk.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. If I was a musician, Sarah, my I would be off by four or five beats because my Wi-Fi stinks at home. I know. <laughs> it's like all those Zoom calls. Yeah, I don't know how they do it, but uh, it looks good. 529 right now, 51 degrees. We'll still head on GMSA. As the number of COVID-19 cases starts to go down, the latest on the efforts to get more children back into the classroom. And Hyundai developing a car that can walk. We'll tell you why and how it works coming up. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, February 10th. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And Mike, it's going to get real weird with the weather. Uh, yeah, really cold, and that's the, the biggest story around here. We will have some wintry uh, precipitation mixed in, especially later on in the forecast, even perhaps to early, early tomorrow morning, uh, and just isolated up in the hill country. But yeah, forget about any warm, except well down to the south. Still going to be very warm uh, as it is right now, down to the uh, south and to the uh, southwest in our viewing area, down around uh, Del Rio, Laredo. 52 here in town, dew point at 50. So we got a lot of humidity out there, and that's the reason for this murky picture with uh, visibilities. Well, it depends on where you are, but the airport has dropped down to just a mile and a half. We were hovering about five, six miles there for a while. Same thing in New Braunfels. Uh, Burning stage is just at a half mile, and visibility will continue to be on the low side throughout the rest of the morning. We will continue to keep some fog around here throughout the rest of the morning. Rock Springs at just a quarter mile and everybody has fog in some form this morning. Also, there's a lot of mist with the fog, but then we do have some detectable rain down here to the southeast that will continue to work its way up to the uh, north and we'll continue to see showers. Um, kind of off and on about a 20, maybe 30% chance of rain throughout the day today. All the allergens are on the low side. I would suspect though, with some of this moisture mold may be going up. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming up uh, about a um, quarter after 730 this morning. So cold and damp today and then tomorrow cold and wet, even a little bit colder, but better rain chances around the area. Uh, hopefully we get some some much needed rain. That would be wonderful. Then as we go into the weekend, it's going to get even colder. Now there could be actually, like I said, tomorrow morning, some uh, mixed precipitation well up to the north and then early on Saturday, maybe. But Monday is the day we're really going to have to watch out for some uh, light snow and maybe some uh, sleet mixed in and very, very cold temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. Map still looks pretty good. Yeah, map uh, looking uh, pretty good, Mike. As you can see, not no real uh, delays or anything. Let's take a closer look. Uh, just at south of uh, downtown, we did have a delay here uh, from going I-10 to uh, 37, and just like that, it's cleared up now, uh, flowing uh, pretty well. My, you mentioned the fog, so we do have uh, some issues, particularly to uh, the north of San Antonio right now, but you can see that's uh, fog creeping down to New Braunfels now. Uh, so if you're on 35, if you're on 46, if you're on 10 coming in from Bernie, uh, watch out for that uh, this morning. Uh, travel time still looking fairly good, though. Still 26 minutes coming in on 35 from New Braunfels, 27 minutes and 281 from uh, Bolverde, 24 minutes 
on I-10 uh, from Bernie and then 19 minutes on 90 into downtown San Antonio from Castroville. And here is a look at Transguide 604 Spurs Ranch looking fine, but again, that fog and those clouds. Mark, Sarah, over to you. This week, the CDC is expected to update its guidance on sending more kids back to class in person. But as CNN's Britt Conroy reports, talk about reopening schools has ramped up debate about how to do that safely. This is what back to school used to look like. <laughs> now, nearly a year into the pandemic, sending kids back to the classroom is a debate about safety and a matter of where you live. Some districts have already returned to in-person learning. Many of the country's 13,000 school districts have come up with their own standards for when it's safe to send kids back into schools. But federal guidelines are expected to come out this week. We already know President Joe Biden's goal is to have more than 50 percent of schools back open by day 100 of his presidency. And that means uh, some teaching in classrooms. So at least one day a week, hopefully it's more. And obviously it is as much as is safe in each school and local district. But as much as is safe is where the debate kicks in. Some medical experts say it can be done safely, pointing to a study of 17 rural schools. The data from schools suggests that there's very little transmission that is happening within the schools, especially when there's masking and distancing occurring. But for some schools, especially those in more populated areas with older buildings or larger classes, meeting safety guidelines can be a challenge. In several states right now, there are intense negotiations over restarting in-person learning. The head of one of the largest teachers unions in the country says federal guidance is a step in the right direction. We've been trying to get unequivocal guidance and the resources since last June. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The Biden administration might require passengers to receive a negative COVID-19 test before they fly domestically. That's according to new Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. He says the CDC is looking into the option and that data and science will guide any final decision. Well, this week, the new CDC director said screening U.S. travelers for COVID could be helpful, but did not expand on that statement. It appears more adults are allergic to peanuts than kids. Researchers have released a new study that says peanut allergies affect more than 4.6 million adults and more than 17 percent of them developed their allergy after turning 18 years old. The Food and Drug Administration has not approved any peanut allergy therapy for adults, but people who think they might have an allergy are encouraged to see a doctor who can give them an EpiPen prescription. Right now it's 537, 51 degrees. Still ahead, Hyundai is building a walking car that has four legs. How it will work, that's coming up. And next, the latest on a shooting in Minnesota. One person dead, four others hurt after a man's opens fire at a health clinic near Minneapolis. 51 degrees at 538 this morning. You can see a tiny bit of that fog that Mike has been talking about, but he's got a lot to tell you about the forecast this week. How expect rain and cooler temperatures. We'll talk about it when we come back. 540 right now, Nat, at the latest on that shooting at a Minnesota health clinic. Police are revealing new details about the suspect who's been banned from the clinic for years. ABC's Kenneth Moten has a story. This morning, a man with an apparent vendetta against medical workers is now accused in a mass shooting at this health clinic. There certainly is a history of uh, him being unhappy with, uh, with health care with the health care that he received. Police say Gregory Ulrich opened fire inside the clinic near Minneapolis, killing one person and wounding four others. According to a court document, Ulrich has been banned from the facility since 2018 and was not allowed to have contact with a doctor working there. Investigators have not released the reason for the restraining order, but according to the Minneapolis Star Tribune, a police report from 2018 says Ulrich was calling his former doctor three times a day, threatening a mass shooting to blow things up and other revenge scenarios. And they said they heard about 11 shots within a minute. Witnesses describing the terrifying scene Tuesday when police say Ulrich shot the victims, then reportedly called police himself. I heard this man say, get down on the ground. And I turned and I saw the back of this man and he had a gun. And there were screaming and there was shooting. 
Police have not released a motive, but Ulrich's brother tells ABC News he developed an opioid addiction after back surgery a few years ago, which he believes may have been a factor in the shooting. To go and have a shooting of people that are health care, taking care of people, it's, it just doesn't make sense. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 542, still 51 degrees. Educating the next generation of journalists. Up next, we give local students a look behind the scenes of what we do here at KSAT 12. Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. Aunt Jemima is no more. The breakfast, breakfast food brand from PepsiCo has a new name and likeness. They'll now be under the Pearl Milling Company title and logo. That was the name of the 19th century ready-made pancake mix brand that eventually became Aunt Jemima. A spokesman, spokesman with the PepsiCo says the new brand will make its debut this June. The Mars Food Company recently removed its Uncle Ben's name and logo from its rice, switching it to Ben's original. Audi says it'll soon be ready to hit the road with its newest electric vehicle. The German automaker showing off the 2022 Audi e-tron GT and its 2022 RS e-tron GT. Both electric Gran Turismos are more powerful, but more lightweight with carbon fiber reinforced plastic roofs. They feature larger wheels and a boosted efficiency. They say the new standard GT should be able to go 238 miles needing before needing a full charge. The RS should go up to 232 miles per charge. The 2022 Audi e-tron GT is set to go on sale this summer. Well, Hyundai is building a walking car that has four legs. Kind of terrifying. The Hyundai Tiger X1 is a concept car with four wheels, each powered by an electric motor. Each of those wheels is on the end of a long bendable leg. The autonomous vehicle can also drive in any direction, forwards, backwards, or side to side, using either its wheels or legs. Engineers envision it being used for difficult rescue operations, carrying supplies, or even exploring the surface of the moon or other planets. Hyundai says the Tiger X1 will take about five years of development and testing before it's ready to go for real world use. New this morning, a look behind the scenes of what we do here at KSAT 12. Before the pandemic, students often had a chance to tour our station to learn more about what we do here. I really miss those tours since that's not possible for the time being. We wanted to take some time to pull back the curtain and answer some frequently asked questions. Things like how and why we got into this business and what it takes to be part of this industry. First up, here's what some of our KSAT team had to say about why they got involved in TV news. I didn't think it was an attainable job until an internship in college. I interned and I had to be there at 4 a.m. in the morning. As crazy as those hours may seem, even as a college student, I still loved it. I found a passion for it. Everything was new every single day. It was high adrenaline and I never got bored. I think at a young age, every day I would watch the news with my parents. We watched the day show every morning and then the evening news, the local news. and. I realized my friends didn't, so I was always informing them about what was going on. And as I got older, I realized the power of knowledge and knowing what was happening in our community, and it was really, really important. Opportunity came up, um, and so it was an example of, in a way, of trying uh, new skills and testing new skills and, and learning uh, new skills. And, and so far, it, it's worked out pretty well. That's just part of the story. We'll have more coming up next hour and on GMSA at 9. You can also check out all the interviews on KSAC.com. Just look for this story in the KSAC Kids section. Well, the last guy featured in that video was our new traffic authority, Samuel King. Let's get the latest from him. Uh, good morning, guys. That was fun to uh, take part in and hope folks are able to check it out. But we do have this situation here. This is a 35 at 1604 and uh, hard to kind of see there, but it gives you an indication of what we talked about all this morning with the uh, visibility. Uh, you can do see the flashing lights and you see sort of the, the traffic uh, behind it uh, there. So that's something to look out for. Here's how that looks on the map uh, right now. So you can see there's a little bit of delay primarily on uh, 1604 and here's uh, the travel time if you're coming in uh, from New Braunfels Excuse me, still 19 minutes each way. So again, uh, most of the <coughs> delay is going to be on 1604, guys. 
Mike would like us to meet Addie and Rook. Yeah, this is going to be the weekend when you open up the door for the dogs to go outside. And they're going to be, like, eh, and they're going to think twice about it. But look at that. Oh, Sweet look at girl. that little face. Sweet little terrier pit bull mix. Addie recently recovered from orthopedic surgery following a leg injury. Good to go. Fully recovered. I assume she comes with the little heart headdress <laughs> there in the pink. And oh, look at this one. This is a sweet little girl who loves to cuddle all your attention. This is Rock. He is a two-year-old terrier. Rook. Pit Rook. Yes, pardon sir. me. Yes. Named after the chess piece, I assume. A pit bull <laughs> mix. He's the sweetest little boy and loving, calm personality. He enjoys walks, yummy treats, and scratches on his head. Don't we all? <laughs> and San Antonio Humane <laughs> Society will be there. Be my furry Valentine. No contact adoption special taking place. 10th through the 16th. All adult pit bull mixes. $25. Adoption fee, all bonded pairs. Adoption fees waived thanks to their guardian angel fund. And for more information, please visit sahumane.org, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. And again, I know there's a lot of information there, but you can go to their website and find out all the uh, the details and what's going on there. So, all right, it is one of those days where you don't want to go outside. It is murky out there. It is damp. It's kind of that damp chill. You got all this humidity and that really kind of so I say, kind of seeps down the back of your neck. We do have a few light showers that are showing up on radar. Other than that, there is some mist out there. The roads were damp coming into work this morning. Visibility did drop down to a mile and a half last half hour out at the airport. Mile and a quarter in New Braunfels. Thicker fog going up I-10 and yeah, everybody pretty much has fog in some some amount of thickness, I guess is the best way to put it. Fredericksburg, three quarters of a mile. LaGrange at three miles visibility. And we will continue to have some of these showers throughout the rest of today. Now we go into tomorrow morning. Some of that could be mixed in with a little bit of uh, some frozen precipitation, maybe a little sleet or even a little freezing rain. And that would be in northern portions of the hill country, uh, perhaps around Kerrville, northern Blanco County. That would be early in the morning tomorrow. Then it's all just going to be in the form of rain throughout the rest of the day tomorrow and could have uh, even a couple of thunderstorms, especially to the uh, kind of south and southeast later on tomorrow afternoon. Jump ahead now over the weekend. There may be a little bit of mix uh, early Saturday morning. Very small chance for that, but the better chance of any uh, precipitation then or rain and or snow wintry mix is going to be on Sunday. Sunday is going to be just cold and blustery. Then we'll start to see some rain move in overnight. That's going to be changing over into some uh, snow as well as sleet, maybe some freezing rain, and that would be in the early morning hours of Monday. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then that's going to be ending by later in the day on Monday. And if we clear out a little bit, it's really, really going to get cold on Tuesday morning. And as far as the humidity, boy, you know, it's Arctic air when you get dew point temperatures that are going to be down into the teens and even single digits by the first part of next week. So we will definitely get a good chunk of that Arctic air mass coming on in here by later on Sunday. It's going to be cold the next couple of days, damp and cold, but really, really cold late in the weekend. 52 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers around here. Temperatures basically don't move. What you see is what you get today and what you see right now is what you get throughout the day. 52, a couple of showers and then the wind's going to pick up late this afternoon. And tonight it's going to be fairly breezy. Tomorrow morning may see some mixed precipitation up there to the north and to the northwest. Otherwise, rainy conditions will have the showers throughout the day today. Mid 40s all day long, low 40s on Friday, a little bit of sunshine. Uh, may struggle to get out of the 30s Saturday, Sunday, cold and blustery. And then we'll have some of that uh, light snow, maybe sleet, freezing rain mixed in early on Monday morning. Well, the calendar fits, Mike. I mean, Mother yeah. Nature tends to like to mess with us around Valentine's Day. Yep. Uh, it's I remember times in the past, like 50, 20 years. All right. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 553, 51 degrees. Let's take a look at the lotto numbers. There they are. Pick three. 398 Fireball 3 Daily 4 9970 Fireball 9 Cash 5 numbers 3 5 12 20 21 and Mega Million 7 18 21 31 40 Mega Ball 9 Mega Plier 4 Have a break
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, day two of former President Trump's second impeachment trial is set to begin in just hours. Our powerhouse political team is going to break down the fallout from yesterday's testimony and tell us what we can expect today. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. We'd like to remind you that our KSAC Community Partner University Health is hosting a big blood drive this month. It's happening February 18th and again on the 19th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Whitty Museum on Broadway. If you'd like to participate, you do need to make an appointment. You do so by calling 358-2812. We also have all this information on KSACcommunity.com. Glad you're with us on this Wednesday morning. Still to come, many of us have a food intolerance. Ahead on GMSA, we'll take a look at the signs you need to know about to see if you should stop eating certain types of foods. The weather is not great this morning. We've got some drizzle and it looks like some fog flashing lights at 35 and 1604. We get the latest on both traffic and weather coming up with Samuel King and meteorologist Mike Osterhage coming up after this break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, it's Wednesday, February 10th. We'll get to weather and traffic in just a moment. But first, the House impeachment managers will take the floor for the opening statements against former President Donald Trump this afternoon. It comes after six Republican senators join Democratic senators to say the trial is constitutional yesterday. CNN's Karen Kaifa is live with what's ahead at trial. Yesterday's arguments were about whether the trial should proceed at all, even though it was a foregone conclusion given the Democratic-run Senate. Pre former President Trump's attorneys said, no, this is unconstitutional. You can't remove a president who's already left office. The House impeachment managers, however, really setting the table for what is to come today, something aides describe as a devastating, compelling set of facts against the president. The Senate will convene is a court of impeachment. The second impeachment trial of Donald Trump opening with an emotional appeal from lead impeachment manager Jamie Raskin to lawmakers who shared his experience at the Capitol on January 6th. This cannot be the future of America. We cannot have presidents inciting and mobilizing mob violence against our government. House impeachment managers pre-butting the argument by the former president's legal team that the trial isn't constitutional because Trump has left the White House. Their argument is that if you commit an impeachable offense in your last few weeks in office, you do it with constitutional impunity. You get away with it. The Trump defense team in a rambling presentation, among other things, accusing the Democrats of political games. We are really here because the majority in the House of Representatives does not want to face Donald Trump as a political rival in the future. And Senate Democrats voted to move forward with the trial, joined by six Senate Republicans, adding Bill Cassidy of Louisiana. And I'm an impartial juror, and one side's doing a great job, and the other side's doing a terrible job on the issue at hand. As an impartial juror, I'm going to vote for the side that did the good job. Six, still well short of the at least 17 Republicans the impeachment managers need to vote to convict. Today, the clock starts for them to make their case. There cannot be unity without accountability. The House impeachment managers will get up to 16 hours over the next two days, and then the Trump defense team will get the same allotment of up to 16 hours over two days. Sources close to President Trump say he was not pleased with his legal team's performance yesterday, described him as even screaming over it. And even some Republicans who didn't necessarily vote the same way as Bill Cassidy were thinking the same thing. Live in Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. Now back to you. Take a look outside with live cam. There's some of that fog that Mike has been talking about. Also, he's got a lot to tell you about the forecast this week as things get a little squirrely as he's described. Right, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, indeed, it is going to and actually starting tomorrow morning in portions of the hill country we may see a little bit of uh, some mixed precipitation, but notice out here over there uh, on 410. It looked a little bit damp on the road. There's been a lot of mist around the area with uh, I guess you can thank this fog for some of that mist and uh, visibility is still a mile and a half. At the airport mile and a quarter new Braunfels a little bit thicker up around Bernie stage Braunfels just uh, improved ever so slightly. Rock Springs now is down to pea soup fog and uh, Beeville just at a half mile 
everybody has a little bit or a lot of fog. And now here's some of the uh, the light showers. Most have been kind of hanging down there along the coastal plain and sort of dying out when they get a little further north. But again, there is mist and the roads just consider them to be damp. And then we'll see more of these light showers moving in and developing throughout the rest of the morning as well as this afternoon. Uh, kind of off and on about a 20-30% chance for some rain. So not great, but that will definitely uh, go up tomorrow. Everything's on the light side as far as the allergens and temperatures not going to move throughout the day. We're in the low 50s right now, and that's where we're going to be staying. So if you're in the 40s, you're basically going to be staying in the 40s, a little bit warmer down at the south and west, and we'll continue to see some of the uh, scattered showers. Also, later on this afternoon, especially the wind is going to be picking up, and then tonight it is going to be blustery. And like I said, uh, things are going to get uh, squirrely, a little bit of mixed precipitation in northern portions of the hill country tomorrow morning, and then we get progressively colder through the weekend. Monday, yeah, it's going to be a, a very interesting day, not to mention extremely cold. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities Samuel King and for having all this, I mean, I see some flashing lights for having all the yuck out there. It hadn't been too bad up to now. Not too bad yet, but we do have this situation as you're talking about Mike here. This is 1604 at 35. You can see uh, the flashing uh, lights there and the delay on 1604 and Mike was talking about uh, the fog. So you definitely can see the impact uh, there. This is a sort of how, how things look here. Uh, here. This is a see that delay 17 miles an hour approaching the intersection, but 35 right now is fine. And here's a look at sort of the fog all the way now down to 410 uh, in San Antonio. So that area that we're talking about as well at 604 and 35 and fog up to Bernie, uh, you get the idea. But the travel times at the moment still look good. Still 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. But as traffic builds, we'll probably see some more delays in the area. Mark, Sarah, over to you. San Antonio police say one man is behind bars in connection with a robbery and stabbing. According to an arrest affidavit, 31 year old Benjamin Lawson walked up to someone outside the Nova Apartments at Vance Jackson UTSA Boulevard back on February 3rd. The affidavit says Lawson pulled out a knife and tried to take the person's fanny pack with personal items. In the argument, police say Lawson stabbed the victim twice and ran off. The affidavit says a witness and the victim were able to identify Lawson leading to an arrest. He's now facing charges of aggravated robbery. Now to the pandemic, local health officials report 1,348 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the total includes some backlog cases from the state report. There were no reported deaths in the county yesterday. The mayor says a seven day moving average is now at 935 cases per day. 884 people remain in the hospital and 117 were admitted yesterday because of the virus. Bear County health officials now reporting two new cases of that UK coronavirus variant. These are the first known cases of this new strain in our area. Stephen Cavazos live downtown with the message local leaders have for the community. Stephen. Well, good morning, Mark. Now, public health officials and local leaders say that we should take this virus seriously and that these dude cases should serve as a wake up call that the fight isn't over and neither is the pandemic. Now, these two cases were reported yesterday during last night's briefing. It's unclear how long the strain has been in our area, but Mayor Ron Nierberg says the variant has been in Texas since the start of this year. This strain, as uh, doctors have reported, seems to be more contagious, uh, which causes it to spread uh, much quickly and more easily from person to person. But according to studies so far, it does not, seem, does not seem to cause more severe illness. And more importantly, studies have shown that the current vaccines available to the public are effective against it. Now, so far, there are at least 40 confirmed cases throughout the state. Right now, the two cases here in our area are still under investigation by Metro Health. Now, Metro Health does still advise people to follow health protocols. That, of course, includes social distancing, staying home if you're sick, and, of course, masking up. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. WellMed is opening its COVID-19 vaccine hotline once again this morning. That number now on your screen, 833-968-1745. The hotline will open at 8 o'clock this morning and it will go until 8 p.m. or until those slots are filled. This is for the vaccination clinics at the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Center on the south side and the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior Center on the northwest side. 
Clinics are currently accepting anyone in the 1A and 1B group. City of Bernie will host a COVID-19 vaccination hub on Friday. Registration for the slots open this morning. Starting at 9 a.m., you can sign up for a spot on the City of Bernie's website. Registration must be done online. You cannot register at the vaccination site. 500 doses will be administered at St. Peter Apostle Catholic Church in Bernie Friday. We have more information about all the vaccination efforts right now on ksat.com. Time check. It is now 609. 51 degrees. Well, there was no last minute excitement in the Spurs game last night. We'll hear how Coach Pop just wants to move past last night's loss. TikTok growing in popularity and it's forcing other companies to play catch up. We'll take a closer look at what Instagram is doing to try to level the playing field. Taking a look outside with live cam 51 degrees at 609. Bear County and our surrounding viewing area experiencing some visibility issues that Mike and Samuel have been talking about this morning. They'll have more on that and what to expect with this cold front later in the week. Today, information and knowledge is at your fingertips. But in the early 1900s, two local men, John Grumbles and Charles Bellinger, had to fight for a library for the black community. They successfully created the Carver Branch Library on Hackberry and brought in Prudus Lewis Curry as the first librarian at the branch. She was kind of like the start of it all. She was a school teacher in South Carolina, then Perry View A&M. She married Pastor Curry of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Then with a passion for education, she spent the next 28 years leading the library. In 1973, the librarian moved to where it currently sits, off East Commerce Street. This is a place where their history is on display, it's respected, it's celebrated, and it doesn't die. Today, the library, which is dedicated to Curry, continues to serve the neighborhood with everything from book fairs and Black History Month events to fitness and karaoke. 614 by now, you've likely heard of TikTok. Well, if you haven't, it's essentially a social media platform with short videos ranging from dance to politics. As Max Massey explains, they are a real competition for Instagram. Instagram launched Reels, a short form video product in the United States on August 5th, just days after former President Donald Trump announced plans to try and ban the Chinese owned TikTok in the country, sending panicked users scrambling to find alternatives. And six months later, Reels on Instagram, not really taken off in the way the company had hoped. TikTok has actually outlasted the Trump administration and continues to be popular. Roughly 100 million users across the United States, a significant impact on American pop culture and a loyal mix of influencers who don't seem to be going anywhere. Unlike with stories at this point in its history, Instagram has not released any metrics about real so far. Facebook has come under some scrutiny from regulators and critics for its aggressive approach to acquiring or cloning rivals to maintain its dominance in the social media market. But Instagram's early struggles to take on TikTok is a reminder that a number of Facebook's copycat products have flopped or simply come up short. Building a clone is easy. Creating a vibrant community is not even for a social media giant like Facebook. With Reels, Instagram hopes to try to replicate much of what makes TikTok popular. That includes the editing effects and an ability to add music or a background sound. But what's harder to replicate is TikTok's powerful For You page and the For You page algorithm, which serves up videos tailored to each user's interests. Here's the ironic part. Instagram Reels largely remains a home to TikTok's greatest hits, with a lot of people reposting their popular TikTok videos with the platform trademark watermark to Reels. It's common to scroll through Reels videos and see one TikTok video after another. Guys, back to you. 616. All right, we're going to check in with Samuel King for our traffic authority. Good morning, Sarah and Mark. So I have the situation here, 1604 uh, at 35. You can see uh, sort of the headlights uh, coming uh, towards you there. So that's still going on. Here's a look at that at the map. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hello. <laughs> And uh, I, uh, well, we, there we go. We have this uh, delay there, <laughs> 22 uh, miles per hour uh, coming up to 
uh, 6 and 4. So this is heading uh, sort of uh, westbound, uh, if you will, but northbound there until you get to 35. Again, 35 uh, looks fine. And one more thing here as we uh, send it over to Mike in just a moment. The, the fog again is coming all the way down to uh, past 1604. This is 410 in town. Uh, so if you're heading out from the west to north or to northeast, you are going to run into some fog this morning. So plan for some extra time. <laughs> yes. uh, He's like the fairy godmother. It's a pretty much shot. Just beware. So. I'll look down. Samuel, you look up. Uh, everybody, oh, never mind. Hey, uh, make sure you just <laughs> look sideways. I know. <laughs> uh, just make sure you uh, keep your eyes on the road this morning and for the next few mornings because it's just kind of it's yucky out there is the best way to put it. It's that damp chill. Uh, do grab a jacket and you will need it all day long. Fog mist, a couple of sprinkles, and then temperatures really aren't going to be moving throughout the day. Also, the wind is going to be picking up later on late this afternoon and tonight. We'll still have a couple of showers around here this is what it looks like on live cam. And yeah, it is not necessarily a pretty picture. So we are looking at some extremely cold temperatures coming in here later on in the uh, late weekend. And Sarah Spivey did some great research yesterday. In the past 30 years, there have only been five times when we've been below freezing for 24 hours or more back in 2011 first couple of days of February 97 right in the middle of uh, January with 60 hours and then going back this was uh, New Year's Eve remember that uh, 17 going into 18 first couple of days of uh, 2018 38 hours and that was a cold year because then only a couple of weeks after that, we were uh, below freezing for more than 24 hours also back in 1996. So those are the times just in the past uh, 30 years where we've been below freezing for 24 hours and we've got a shot at it Sunday into Monday. A couple of light showers are showing up on radar right now. Also, with all this fog around here and visibilities are pretty low, we do have a lot of mist around. So we will continue to see some of these light showers throughout the day. Now tomorrow we do have a chance for some of this uh, freezing, maybe some freezing rain or a little bit of sleet in northern portions of the hill country early tomorrow morning and even going out I 10 in toward Kerrville. Then throughout the day it's just going to be basically in the form of rain. Could see even a couple of thunderstorms thrown in tomorrow. Hopefully some folks get some decent rain. Then going into Saturday morning there is a very, very small chance and I, I got to emphasize small chance for a couple of sprinkles or even a little bit of something frozen in parts of the hill country, but the better opportunity is going to be Sunday night late into Monday, and this is when we get the really cold air moving on in here. So we do have a good shot at some sleet and or snow mixed in, maybe a little bit of freezing rain in the first portion of the day on Monday. Thank goodness it is a holiday, so a lot of folks aren't going to be going into work. Here's the gee whiz for this morning. 31 below in Cutbank, and the wind chill there is 55 degrees below zero. It feels more than 100 degrees colder in Cutbank than it does as of right now. Just to kind of put it in perspective, this cold air though will continue to work its way down to the south, so it'll be a little bit colder tomorrow, and then on Friday into Saturday, and then by uh, Sunday, that's when the really really cold stuff moves on in here, and that's going to be Sunday into Monday, and then also Tuesday. And it actually looks like the coldest morning may be Tuesday morning. So today, 52 degrees, it's going to be the case all day long. Showers um, just off and on here and there, and then it's going to get breezy late today and especially tonight. Now, tomorrow morning, we'll have some mixed precipitation up there to the north and to the northwest, northern portions of the hill country. Temperatures stay only in the mid 40s, low 40s on Friday. I think a little bit of sunshine, maybe just a bit of mix up to the north early Saturday morning and then Sunday it is going to be even colder, very blustery and there's the opportunity that we are going to be from Sunday into Monday to stay below freezing for more than 24 hours and we'll have some light snow, some mixed uh, precipitation, freezing rain or some sleet and then it's very cold Tuesday morning down to 20 degrees. So yep, bundle up this weekend. Wow, there is a ton going on there in that extended forecast. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 620, 51 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Federal investigators are looking into further actions after the findings into the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant and nine others. It's been released. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
special day visibly fades the dark spots away. New Neutrogena Rapid Tone Repair, 20% pure vitamin C. A serum so powerful, dark spots don't stand a chance. See what I mean? Neutrogena. This Valentine's Day, find the gift that makes your love shine even brighter. It's the Valentine's Day gifting event. Get 25% off everything. Sales. Ready to shine from the inside out? Try Nature's Bounty Hair, Skin, and Nails Gummies. The number one brand to support beautiful hair, glowing skin, and healthy nails. And try Advanced, now with two times more biotin. Hello, how can I... Sore throat pain? Try new Vicks VapoCool Drops and Honey Lemon Chill for a fast-acting rush of relief like you've never tasted in... Vicks VapoCool Drops, now in Honey Lemon Chill. In this morning's GMA First Look, new insight into what caused the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others. The National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of this accident was the pilot's decision to continue flight under visual flight rules and to instrument meteorological conditions which resulted in the pilot's spatial disorientation and loss of control. The NTSB places blame squarely on the pilot, Ara Zobayan, for the helicopter crash, saying in its report that the pilot made a series of decisions that went against his training and federal aviation rules when he flew into bad weather. We use the term crash rather than accident, and I think it's important to understand the distinction. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more details from the NTSB report and the new reaction this morning. With your GMA First Look, Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. After the Spurs' dramatic win Monday night against the Warriors, the Spurs were looking to recreate some of that magic last night, but Golden State would not let the Silver and Black make a comeback this time. In fact, it was just the opposite. Both teams tied at the half 50-50, but the Spurs came out third looking like they drank too much water during the break. Warriors went on a 20-2 run to start the second half and never looked back. Golden State blows past the Spurs' final 114-91. Pop says he's ready to put this game in the rearview mirror. Well, it's important every year. You know, it's an opportunity to uh, come together and uh, concentrate on basketball uh, without too many directions. So it'll be a long, tough trip. Uh, we can make it real positive and grow from it. Spurs now go on their rodeo road trip. They won't play a home game for more than two weeks. The Silver and Black will travel to Georgia first to play the Atlanta Hawks. On Friday night, tip off schedule for 6.30 p.m. San Antonio time. 6.26 and 51 degrees. You may have food intolerance and not even know about it. We'll have some signs you should be looking out for. And in our next half hour, we take a look at what KSAT does behind the scenes. We'll shed some light on what it means to be a journalist and answer some viewer questions. And trans guide as we go to break. It's a murky morning out there. Somewhat slick in places and fog might be a problem as well. We'll get an update on that. And when that really, really cold air is going to be here, could that get th make things extra interesting around here? Mike has the answer coming up. Major supermarket pharmacies joining the fight to get people vaccinated. More of that story coming up on GMSA. Coming up, the Senate impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump continues. I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill, tracking the latest. And outside with live cam, looks like we have some fog, perhaps some drizzle to deal with right now. You know, overall, this winter has been fairly mild, but what if we told you we're about to experience an entire season's worth of winter weather in the next week or so. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, February 10th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Yeah, it's going to be a wild week this week, Mike. I mean, starting today with the fog and then just it kind of just goes. It's like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, and I think with some of the temperatures uh, down the road, people are going to think it's uh, it's a winter's worth of uh, cold because it's going to be really, really cold around here. This is the murky picture over there. This is a uh, 10 4 10. We're looking down toward this is 10 going westbound. 4 10 is right about in there somewhere. So now granted, this camera's on top of the building, but there is a lot of uh, fog, some low clouds, 51 degrees, 2.49. That temperature really is not. I mean, may fluctuate a degree or two throughout the day, but 
but basically temperatures aren't going to be going anywhere. What's interesting though is uh, Del Rio Carrizo Springs are still in the low 60s right now and even further down to the south around Laredo's uh, 70 at uh, earlier this morning. Yesterday temperatures did get up into the mid and upper 80s well down to the southwest. The front did not move through obviously. Now we do have a lot of fog around uh, visibility in some way, shape or form. You've got fog everywhere, especially Rock Springs. Zero visibility as of right now. One mile in Kerrville and just a half mile down the road in Beeville. This is going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours. A little bit of detectable rain, but there's mist and just that light kind of drizzle in places. And so the roads are definitely damp. Just assume that throughout the rest of today. All the allergens are on the light side. The updated count should be coming out in about an hour or so. Cold and damp today. We'll have showers off and on about a 20-30% chance for some rain. Now tomorrow, cold and wet and there is a chance for a little bit of light mixed precipitation. Maybe some uh, sleet or freezing rain in northern portions of the uh, the hill country. Uh, northern Blanco County, northern uh, Gillespie County around there. And then we go into Friday. We'll start to uh, maybe not clear out, but have a little bit of a break, even a peak or two of sunshine, but it will get con continue to get colder as we go in the next couple of days and then very cold Sunday into Monday. And that's when we have well, a slight chance for a speck of uh, mixed precipitation early Saturday, but especially uh, Monday snow and some sleet. And that's going to be around a good chunk of the area. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. And yeah, there's the depiction of all that fog out there. Yeah, definitely up to the north. Uh, Mike, especially as so we were on 35, you're on 46, uh, 281, and 1604. Definitely seeing some of the fog this morning. And we still have a situation at 1604 and 35 uh, here. This is a, a crash uh, from earlier uh, this morning. You can kind of see uh, the tail lights there if, if making out through the fog. Uh, the situation is improving on 1604, but now we're getting a bit of a delay on 35 heading northbound. So watch out for that. Uh, 281 also in the fog zone, so to speak, but the travel time still looking fairly good. Seven to nine minutes in each direction between Bulverde Road and 1604. Other travel times, 26 minutes still coming in from New Braunfels on 35 into downtown. 24 minutes uh, from Bernie on I-10. 17 minutes on uh, 35 from Lytle, 29 minutes on I-10 into downtown San Antonio from Seguin. Mark, Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, beginning Friday, more than 1,000 Walmart and Sam's Club pharmacies across the country will get allotments of the COVID-19 vaccine. This is part of the U.S. federal retail pharmacy program. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown as vaccination efforts are ramping up. Good morning, Stephen. Hey there, Sarah. Good morning. Well, the Walmart pharmacy located off Days of Zavala Road is so far the only one in our area that will be distributing the vaccinations, and that's going to be happening as early as Friday. Now, this will be for eligible residents who fall in the 1A and 1B tier category. Now, in addition, the WellMet hotline will also open again later this morning. You can call that number that's listed on your screen. That's 1-833-968-1745. The hotline will be open from 8 this morning to 8 this evening. Wellnet officials say the line is already overwhelmed with calls, but they encourage people to keep trying. 6,000 slots will be filled between the two clinic locations, both located on the city's east side and the city's west side. And we also want to remind you that Bernie is hosting a vaccination hub this Friday. Registration will be opening later this morning. 500 doses, doses that is, of the Moderna vaccine will be distributed on Friday at St. Peter the Apostle Catholic Church. Now, there will be a time to make the registration. We'll be opening up later this morning. That'll be a link that's going to be available. This will also be available in a Spanish translation. Of course, we have this information posted on our website. You can head over there. That's ksat.com. Sarah, Mark, over to you. Thank you, Stephen. House impeachment managers and defense lawyers started their cases in the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. The Senate voted that the trial is constitutional and will go on, but the question of whether former President Trump will be convicted of inciting an insurrection is still being debated. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. And good morning. House managers spent the opening day of the trial trying to link Trump's words in the days and weeks leading up to the riot, saying if that's not an impeachable offense, they don't know what is. The Senate chamber under siege a month ago. Now a courtroom on the first day of former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. 
House impeachment managers using searing images from the January 6th attack to lay claim that Trump incited the deadly insurrection. If you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Prosecutor Jamie Raskin recounting how his family was with him that day at the Capitol, his emotions weighing heavy as he recalled what his daughter said to him. He said, Dad, I don't want to come back to the Capitol. <laughs> Day one for this unprecedented trial was meant to focus on the constitutionality of the trial. Trump's lead defense attorney, Bruce Castor, spent most of his time on the arguments that weren't clearly related to those constitutional questions. Senators are patriots first. They love their country. And sources tell ABC News Trump was not pleased with the performance of his defense team. Trump's other attorney, David Schoen, trying to assert since Trump was removed from office by the will of the American voters, Democrats have no case. For a great many Americans see this process for exactly what it is, a chance by a group of partisan politicians seeking to eliminate Donald Trump from the American political scene. But after the four hours of arguments, senators voting to move ahead with the trial, with six Republicans siding with Democrats that the trial is constitutional, even though Trump is no longer president. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. In your morning headlines, a Biden administration might require passengers to receive a negative COVID-19 test before flying in the, U in the U.S. That's according to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who spoke to Exios on HBO. He says the CDC is looking into the option and that data and science will guide any final decision. On Monday, the new CDC director said screening for a U.S. traveler for COVID-19 could be helpful. There is some new optimism about jobs across America after the new report from the Labor Department. It shows layoffs were down slightly in December while job openings slightly increased. However, experts say it appears employers were slower in actually hiring employees, leading to December's decline in overall employment. Two of the biggest names in stocks, the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, are each going to court against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The issue is about new federal plans that would require the exchanges make more pub more make information more public. That data is typically sold to investors at a premium. There is a replacement for Aunt Jemima. The brand of pancake syrups and mixes rooted in racial stereotypes is being retired and replaced with a new name, the Pearl Milling Company. PepsiCo says products under the new brand will start showing up in June. Working from home may be transitioning to working while traveling. Airbnb says it is starting to see a trend of longer stays at its locations. The company says one of its biggest segments is monthly rentals. Twitter considering fees to use its platform. The company says it's exploring subscriptions and other revenue generating features. Its primary moneymaker is still ads. And according to Bloomberg, one idea Twitter is considering is allowing people to tip the users they follow. Spotify says it's testing the streaming of live lyrics in the U.S. as the music streaming service started offering the new lyrics feature to some American users yesterday. The company has not said when the test will expand. This is the second time the feature has been offered in the U.S. The first time stopped in, two, in 2016. Distance measuring devices are being allowed for the first time at three major golf tournaments. The devices allow a player to focus on an object and determine its exact yardage from the ball. They'll be used at one event each on the PGA, women's and senior tours. The city of Tampa will have a socially distanced Super Bowl champions parade today. The Buccaneers and city officials teamed up to have a boat parade in the river running through Tampa. Supporters can raise the flags while watching from the shore in designated areas where distancing can be observed according to the city. Congratulations to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right now, 640, 51 degrees. Well, many of us have a food intolerance. After the break, we will have some of the signs you need to know about to, to see if you should stop eating a certain type of food. Could the food you're eating be killing you? If you have trouble digesting certain foods, it could be a food intolerance. Symptoms include gas, bloating, constipation, weight gain, fatigue, joint pain, acne, and brain fog. The esophagus gets narrowed into a stricture and food actually gets stuck. But it's different than an allergy. While a food intolerance targets your digestive tract, a food allergy affects your immune system. 
There are some tests to detect if you produce IgG antibodies after eating foods, but the jury is still out on their effectiveness. Standard allergy testing, which is the specific IgE, the blood test or the skin prick test, really don't identify foods in this disease because this disease is sort of a different mechanism. If you think you have a food intolerance, it's best to see your doctor, keep a food diary, and try an elimination diet where you remove certain foods to help pinpoint triggers. Most professional organizations don't recommend the IgG test due to lack of evidence, and most insurance companies won't cover the cost. RJ Marquez, Case at 12 News. 6.45 this morning, and we're continuing our look behind the scenes as we give you a taste of what we do here at KSAT. And as we mentioned in our last hour, we are answering some frequently asked questions and giving you a sneak peek of what it takes to be part of this industry. Here's some of what the KSAT team had to say about their role at the station. Take a listen. Don, what do you do here? I'm a director. I've been doing this for 32 years now. I first looked over the, the entire show in the newsroom and I put codes to every story so that those codes were put the uh, shots on the air and the videos on the air. Joy Presley, I'm the executive producer of GMSA. I'm in charge of handling the reporters, the producers, our show, flow, content, everything. We're live at such a, ver a variety of places. I mean, one day we could be at a new bar and restaurant, the next day we could be at the hospital. Next day we could be out at breaking news at a shooting. You never really know what the next day is going to bring. My name is Beatriz Ramirez. I'm an editor here for KSAT for the GMSA. Hello everybody, my name is Hardy Meredith and I'm one of the producers for Good Morning San Antonio on KSAT 12. I produce the 4.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. part of the show. And as you can see, I'm not at the station, I'm actually working from home. That's a cool setup. I mean, we'd heard about some of the, I mean, they're like, we can see you guys in the studio, even when we're not on the air. <laughs> we didn't really believe them till now. Yeah. We have more of this story coming up today on GMSA at 9. So good to see all of our behind the scenes people. And you can also check out all the interviews on KSAT.com. Just look for the story in the KSAT Kids section. Samuel King is standing by with an update at 647. Oh, good morning, Sarah and Mark. As Mike's been mentioning the cold weather coming up, so here's some uh, some reminders from uh, AAA Texas. Uh, make sure to check your battery systems because uh, cold weather we we're expecting can be hard on batteries. Switch off your lights, your heater, and your wipers uh, when you uh, turn off your engine. Also, unplug those uh, cell phone chargers. Keep a heavy blanket in the trunk just in case this weekend you get stranded, especially if you're planning to head north of our area this weekend. And also check your tire pressure uh, coming up in the next few days because that'll be something to keep in mind. Uh, have the crash looks like it's cleared at uh, 1604 and 35, but now we have a delay on 35. So if you're heading northbound on 35 toward New Braunfels, it'll take you 26 minutes from 410, uh, 19 minutes uh, heading into town. So that's still looking good heading southbound, but again, northbound some delays. And this is 410 at Jackson Keller. See some of the traffic uh, building there, but it is flowing and you can kind of see sort of the mist and fog and everything this morning, guys. Well, Mike, I wish you had more to talk about this morning. I know the <laughs> forecast is extremely boring for the next week. Yeah, and uh, it is, it, it's cold, it's chilly out there right now, uh, except way down to the south, and then it's going to be getting colder, and it's always that fine line around here where you either have rain or then a little bit of uh, some mixed precipitation. We may start to see that tomorrow morning up in northern parts of the hill country. We've got the fog to deal with this morning, a little bit of light rain, especially down to the southeast, and even though nothing's being picked up, further to the north. There's a lot of mist out there. The roads are definitely damp and everybody has some fog this morning. There are no advisories posted because most all of the uh, readings are above a quarter of a mile. Some spots are a little bit lower than that, but no widespread, really, really thick fog. It's just a, uh, it's just <laughs> yucky out there and with all this moisture too it makes it kind of a damp chill so 51 degrees really kind of seeps down the back of your neck 40s up to the uh, north and then look at that 70 in Laredo and that's because the front which moved in here it was kind of wrapping around around to the uh, from the northeast yesterday morning and early afternoon and now it's stalled down here to the southeast so we still have some milder air down there to the uh, south and west now we'll keep some uh, light showers scattered about the area today 
about a 20-30% chance for some rain. It won't be raining constantly, of course. We keep a lot of clouds around. Then in the overnight hours, we start to get some of that colder air moving into parts of the hill country with some of the moisture. So there will be a little bit of uh, some mixed precipitation even up toward Austin, Kerrville, maybe into Gillespie County, parts of Blanco County. And this would be early tomorrow morning and through portions of the uh, the commute shouldn't be too much on some of the uh, elevated uh, roadways, overpasses and uh, grassy surfaces. Maybe it's not going to be a lot of precipitation. Doesn't look like tomorrow morning, but we will have more of it throughout the rest of the day. Tomorrow, the best rain chances are going to be throughout the day tomorrow. Now we jump ahead into the weekend Saturday also, which uh, really small chance up to the north. A little bit of mixed precip precipitation early on Saturday. Sunday is going to be a cold day. We get sort of our, our next reinforcing big surge of cold air moving on in here. We'll have some rain around later on and then some uh, fairly decent chance for some sleet as well as a little bit of snow or even some freezing rain mixed in early on Monday and that'll be uh, moving on out of here. Like I said, some really cold temperatures. Looks like it's going to be windy as well on top of that Sunday into Monday. Today, temperatures pretty much aren't going to be moving throughout the day. We stay in the low 50s all day long. Uh, a couple of scattered showers here and there, and then the wind is going to pick up later on late this afternoon and tonight's going to be breezy overnight. Tomorrow we'll have some mix tomorrow morning up in uh, northern parts of the hill country. And that'll be a little bit of a sleet or freezing rain and then just showers. Otherwise temperatures again stay pretty much steady mid 40s, low 40s on Friday, a very damp chill, even a little bit of sunshine peeking through on Friday, but then cloudy skies on Saturday, slight mix early up to the north, very small chance of that, only 40, and then it's going to be colder Sunday and Monday, blustery on Sunday, and uh, the chance for some snow and or uh, sleet or freezing rain early on Monday. Can't remember the last time you had both a wintry mix and snow on the seven day, same seven day forecast. It's it's been a while. Mm -hmm. It has been a while. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 651, 51 degrees. Well, you may have seen stories on KSAT about the role of prominent black Americans in our collective history. It's all part of Black History Month. Tomorrow on GMSA, we will take a look at the origins of the annual celebration. We take you outside with live cam out there right now. We've got uh, heavy traffic. You're going to want to slow down this morning. The weather is a little bit on the iffy side. Top stories coming up right here on GMSA. Four. Four. Hi, everyone. This is uh, 655. Here's a look at uh, uh, traffic uh, here. We have some fog uh, reported, especially north of uh, 410 in uh, Bear County. So look out for that. Still have the situation at 35 and 1604. A bit of a delay there, but travel time still looking good all around, especially on the west side this morning. And Mike, definitely some fog and mist to watch out for. Yeah, roads are definitely damp out there. Visibility all around the area. Everybody pretty much is seeing some fog far and wide and we do have some of these light showers, which will continue throughout the day off and on. Temperatures are going to be holding steady today. We are going to be staying just in the low 50s here, and uh, all the allergens are on the light side. And then tomorrow morning may get a little dicey in northern parts of the Hill Country. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good Morning America's next. We'll see you at 9.